So today, we're getting close to finishing up this series on the faith of God. This is number five in the series, Have the Faith of God, number five. And I was praying because we're getting to the end of this. I was asking the Lord, you know, what really was the Holy Spirit? You know, when you cover material that, that we've talked about before or some, you know, it's like, why do you want to do this? Is it because you've never heard of it? No, that's never the case. You know, most of us have heard a whole bunch of stuff. But I really felt like one of the major points that God was wanting to give us was to increase our vision and enlarge our capability to understand that we create with God. We can create with God. And for most people, I, you know, man is, God has given man the ability to create, but for most people, they see that as you know, their natural gifts and talents. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about creating by the Spirit with the Holy Spirit. And so I felt like that was one of the points. So I want, before we leave this, and today may be the final, ser- uh, the final message in this series, I don't know, but I just wanted to go over one of those points and then give you an application of how to do this that maybe will help you, okay? Maybe will enlarge your capability to begin to see yourself as creating with God. So let's just start out with a simple point here. Uh, we have the word study New Testament up there. And folks, this specifically this particular verse, Mark 11, 23, is probably one of the clearest verses in the Bible that talks about the fact that you have a divine right to create, okay? And I want you to be really sure that you understand this. Now, you all know the verse, for whoever says to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes, but believes. Now, let's slow down at that point, that the things which he says. Now, I'm just going to throw in the meaning from the grammar. I'm not going to go into all the grammar because we've done that before. But believes that the things that he says in the present shall exist in the present. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, the phrase we centered on was shall come to pass. And the Greek word underneath that is genomai. Let's put that up on the screen because this is one of the things you need to see. Nobody's going to actually do this believing that this works unless they are fully convinced in their heart that they really have a right before God to do this. Wouldn't you agree? You've got to be convinced in your own heart and mind, I can do this because Jesus, the word of God, says I can do this. This word, genomai, that is under that phrase in the King James Bible, shall come to pass, is in the present tense. And this is the meaning of the verse, to begin to be, to come into existence as implying origin from either natural causes or through special agencies. To begin to be, to come into being as implying origin. What does that phrase mean in common everyday language? If something something is originating from something, it means it wasn't there, right? and it originated, then it went from it wasn't there to it came into being. And that's what this word beneath that shall come to pass means. So the meaning of the verse is whoever says to the mountain, get out of here, and doesn't doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says in the present exists or comes into being or originates. Y'all get that? exists, that what he says exists in the present, then in the future he will see whatever he says. This is probably the clearest verse that I am familiar with. There are other verses that speak to this issue, but this is one of the clearest verses because this verse is, Jesus said, whosoever, if you will fund this with the faith of God, and that's where I think it's been a chart for a lot of people, is they've tried to fund it. See, the truth is the principles of faith are so simple, it's very easy to think that the life is in the principles, and it's not. It's in the God behind the principles. And of course, Jesus said you could do this by what? Having the faith of God, okay? If you'll make it your life's walk to walk out of his faith given to you, that funds the ability to do this. And he said, if you'll do that, now notice these decrees do two things. Speak to the mountain. Mountains normally represent obstacles to something, right? So you have Jesus saying, whoever will speak to the obstacles in their life, and command them to go and believe that what he says exists in the present, he'll have whatever he says. The other thing that decrees do is they remove obstacles, but the other thing that decrees do is they create. 
what the Lord says you can have. You are literally creating the result with your decrees if your decrees are funded by the faith of God. They don't create necessarily, if you don't believe that they're funded by the faith of God, well, I can go out and confess anything. I think I'll go out and recreate, I'll do what Joshua did and stop the sun. Well, that won't work very well unless you're funded by the faith of God, amen? But if you're funded by the faith of God, and we've talked about that through this series, then decrees remove the obstacles from your life that are blocking what God wants to do. And your decrees, according to this verse, create what it is God is showing you in the spirit. And a lot of times I think we get into this do loop of where we see something in the spirit and we get into this mode of, we get in, you know what I'm saying? You get into this mode of waiting for God. Yes, we have a preaching voice in the an echo in the room. Amen. <laughs> Are y'all with me? You know, we get into this mode of God shows us something and we start waiting for God to do the something that we've seen. Well, this verse is saying as God is showing you something, he's waiting for you to realize that he's imparting to you the faith of God and he expects you to use that faith through decrees to get rid of the obstacles that are in your life and to literally create what he's showing you is yours. That's off. Isn't that different from just waiting for God to do it for you? Come on. That's completely and totally different. And that's how powerful this verse is. So I just wanted to give you that and make sure when I stand up here and say, you can create the result that you're looking for. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I got it, you know. No, this verse shows you that Jesus said, if you're a whosoever and if you will live your life out of the faith of God and follow that, that your decrees can remove the obstacles in your life and your decrees can create what God shows you he has for you. And a lot of people are, a lot of the stands, the quote stands of faith are much longer than they're supposed to be. And they're much longer because we're sitting around, we know that God has shown us something, we're waiting for God to do it, but we're not putting our words and our decrees into motion because God wants to create what he's showing you through you. Amen. Now, this is a big deal. And this is a verse where I am proving to you through the languages that Jesus said, who, who can do this, folks? Come on, whosoever, right? Whosoever. Anybody in here not a whosoever, okay? And Jesus said the only requirement for this to happen was to fund these actions with the faith of God. And frankly, I think that's what, that's what has really been a, a, a leap for the people of God is because the principles of faith are so simple, it's very easy to fall into the trap of using the principle rather than funding it with the faith of God and then using the principle. Do you all get that? Amen. So this is a verse I want to make sure you can create. Can you say that with me? Do you even believe it yet? I can create with my decrees. Amen. I can create. I can remove the obstacles from my life with my decrees. Come on, say it with me. I can remove the obstacles from my life with my decrees funded by the faith of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is that good? So if anybody, because there's a lot of people, folks, I'll tell you honestly, there's a lot of people that do not believe this. You start, and you start talking, do, do you realize that this verse is saying that you can act like God did when he said, let there be light and there was light? You say, I can't create light. God isn't asking you to create light. He already did that. But he's asking you to believe his word and make decrees on the basis of his word of what it says in the word that you can have. And then Jesus said, if you'll do this, you can create it, you can remove the obstacles, and you'll have, you'll see with your eyes in the future, whatever you say. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, honestly, and I gave you a definition in your notes of something simple to add to Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is the, is the product of an encounter with God where the Holy Spirit reveals something to you in the word and you choose to believe it. That has all the parts. You need illumination, revelation, and then you need to believe what's being illuminated and revealed to you. Is that clear? 
So maybe that'll give you a little more practical gumption, you know, to, to realize this. This is not hard, but it does require focus. Amen. It does require focus and consistency. Praise the Lord. That was one of the words, by the way, that God spoke to Gloria Copeland when she was in Bible school. I thought that was very good. The Holy Spirit said to her, the power is in consistency. That's absolutely true because a lot of people are not consistent and they're, God's just about ready to do it and they give up. Amen. So the power is in consistency. I think that's a good word, don't you? Yes. Now let's look at an application strategy with all of this. Amen. An application strategy. Honestly, I am well aware as a pastor that many people still struggle with seeing themselves as being able to create with their decree. Some don't, but some do. It's like it's overwhelming, especially when you use examples like, you know, let there be light. And they think, yeah, great. You know, God can do that. But what, you know, where about, what about me? The examples that we use to teach this a lot of times put it in a place where a lot of people don't, you'd be amazed at the number of times over the years that people walk up and say, I know that it's in the Bible, but I have no idea how to get it to work. Well, this is why we're teaching this, is because if you fund this with the faith of God, it's not that hard, but it does require consistency. So let's talk about some application strategies. Amen. Let's go to Galatians 2.20 and look at something, look at some application strategies that'll maybe put you in a better frame of reference concerning decrees and concerning what Mark 11, 23 and 24, 22, 23 and 24 say, 220. Let's read it first. I am crucified. This is the King James with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, this is a verse that everybody has heard numerous times over and over again. I am crucified with Christ, but I want to talk about it a little bit. I was, you know, I'm, I'm like all of you, I listen to various programs and listen to various authors and writers and so forth to see what God is speaking to them. And I was listening to one of the prophets. Actually, I've forgotten who this was now, but that's really not important. The word is important. But I was listening to one of the prophets, and they were talking about praying one day to the Lord. And as they were praying to the Lord, they had a picture in their mind's eye of Jesus being out here and praying to, you know, praying to the Lord as a person. And you see that in the Bible. Jesus was down here praying to the Father in heaven, right? You see those kinds of things. But as they were praying to the Lord, the Lord looked at this person very strangely and then took one gigantic step in the vision like this. And as he took one gigantic step, he went inside the person. And then as he went inside the person, all of a sudden, he just kind of exploded. And while I was listening to this story about this, I actually saw this myself personally in the spirit. And I saw the, sp I saw the fact, and as I was sitting there watching, I had a picture of myself and I was watching Jesus. He, it was like by the Holy Spirit, now not in bodily form, right? But by the Holy Spirit, I saw Jesus expand on the inside of me and I saw him looking through my eyes speaking through my mouth, expressing himself through my hands. I saw that. And see, folks, here's the thing that the, if you really get this, if this goes off inside of you, this will revolutionize because what you, what you have to understand is this verse says, well, let me, let, let's just talk about the verse a little bit. I am crucified with Christ. What's really cool is, is this is in a perfect tense which means that it's already over. The ESV translates this verse, I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. Did you realize that you're already crucified with Christ? You say, why don't I see more of that? It's because there's a process that allows that to come out. You're already crucified. Uh, this, this kind of thought and thinking to me is especially applicable to people who don't see themselves as any big deal. Amen. You know, it's, this verse doesn't speak very much to people who think, man, I'm great, I'm smart, I'm handsome, I've got a lot of money, I've, I, I can do anything, I'm young, I'm virile, 
you know, people that think like that, this verse doesn't have any applicability to them because they're too busy thinking about what they can do. This verse is for the people who know they've tried the best to do certain things in their life and they've messed it up royally and seen their own mistakes and realized their own fallibility. When you realize your own fallibility and your own ability to create mistakes, then this verse is like a fresh breath of air saying, oh boy, Jesus will actually do this through me. Now, get this. The King James says, I am crucified. The Greek in the perfect tense actually says, I have been crucified. Do you realize that that vision that I just shared with you that started with the prophet and then came to me, do you realize that that's true of every person sitting in this room? Jesus is actually inside of you by the Spirit of God. And you need to think about that. Jesus seeing through your eyes, Jesus' hands extending through your hands, Jesus' voice extending through your voice. That's why Mark eleven twenty three 23 works. If you can't see yourself do it, see Jesus doing it through you. There's a couple of great notes on this. Um, the Scofield Bible, which I'm not exalting that above anything else. I just got this note from the Scofield Bible. But the Scofield Bible right in front of this verse says, the Christian life is an outliving of the in-living Christ. Let me say that again. The Christian life is an outliving of the in-living Christ within you. And see, a lot of people, they get bogged down with the fact of, well, I've got to do this and I've got to do that and I've got to go here and I've got to go there. This verse says, you have been crucified with Christ. You are still alive, but it's not you that is alive, but Christ that is alive in you. Jesus is alive in you. As long as you just conceptualize that as, well, that's the Holy Spirit and he's a force and I'm not a force, I'm a person, you know. But no, no, Jesus himself is alive inside of you, looking out through your eyes, ready to speak through your voice, ready to express himself through your hands. Now, how many of you have any trouble at all believing that Jesus' decrees come to pass? Come on. Jesus' decrees come to pass. I dare say if we went around the room and sat down and started talking about this, and I asked each one of you, do you have any problem believing if Jesus made a decree it would come to pass? Almost all of you would probably say, well, no, of course not, but that's Jesus. Folks, he's in you, ready to make those same decrees that you think is so hard He's ready to make those same decrees. I love that. The Christian life is the outliving of the in-living Christ. Isn't that good? The outliving of the in. And when you start conceptualizing the Christian life, so you, what, what you've got is Jesus is coming out of you and living the Christian life through you. So now you got to think this through real carefully here. So Jesus is coming out of you, living the Christian life to you. Well, then what are you saying? Is Jesus making the decree? Yep. Now, wait a minute. You're confusing me, Henry, because Mark eleven twenty three 23 was addressed to the disciples. So what are you saying? I thought, I thought decrees were coming from the disciples. Yep. Are you getting this, folks? As long as you think linearly about this issue, it's very difficult to see this. But nonlinear thinking allows you to embrace the fact that two things can be true at the same time. Now hear this carefully. When you make these kind of decrees out of Mark eleven twenty three, and they are funded with the faith of God, it is Jesus making the decree out of you and through you. But it is also you making the decree out of you and through you. Are you hearing this? And when you start to connect these dots together, look what God has given you. And then most people say, well, if Jesus is going to make the decree through me, then that's no problem, right? Because Jesus' decrees always get met. Amen? Do you see where this goes? And all it involves is switch off the linear thinking in your head and realize that two things that appear to be different can actually be true at the same time. This is all through the Bible. This is not just in this verse. Jesus 
excuse me, Jesus was constantly saying to the, to the disciples as he was teaching them, you know, he would get off and go to Gethsemane and say, Father, and, you know, Jesus is down here and the Father's up here and Jesus is praying to the Father, right? And then he turns around in other preaching and he says, oh yeah, by the way, I and the Father, we're one. Well, wait a minute, which is it? Is it Jesus here and the Father here? Or is it I and the Father are one? Is it Jesus here and the Father there? Yep. Is it Jesus here and the Father one? Yep. You get where I'm going with this? this? This understanding is all through the Bible. Jesus was here as a separate entity and as a separate person. And at the same time, he made bold, incredible decrees that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I and the Father are one. Yes? Did he make those statements? So Jesus was here, the Father was there, and yet at the same time, Jesus and the Father were one. Jesus was speaking, and as he spoke, we were watching the Father in action. Now, those are faith statements, but those are true. I believe they're all true. This verse is saying you can create with decrees, and then you say, well, gosh, that's a big leap. Not if you understand that it's Jesus speaking through you. The whole of the Christian life, folks, is you letting Jesus out. And the Christian life is Jesus doing the Christian life through you. Well, wait a minute, I thought that was my responsibility. Yep. Well, I don't understand then. Where does Jesus come in? I thought he's doing it. Yep. Are you following this? It's, it's both. And when you start to understand that, that takes the mystique off of this whole thing of being able to speak and create with your words. Because you realize, it's, it, just like Paul said, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who liveth in me. Is this coming alive for some of you in a new way? It's Christ that liveth in me. Well, well if Jesus is going to do this through me, well, that opens the door to all kinds of possibilities because very few Christian believers think that Jesus has any hindrances, and they're correct. He doesn't. Amen. But neither do you if you'll let him live the Christian life through you. There's bumper stickers. This is not a religion. It's a relationship. You know, there's all kinds of bumper stickers on cars. Well, guess what, folks? This is not just your decrees, but his when it's funded by the faith of God. Now, you have to use this very wisely and very carefully. Does that help? I mean, to begin to see this, because there's so many things I, I can personally testify, and I assure you by the Spirit that the Word declares that there's things that all of us are going through right now, and we're going through them way longer than we're supposed to go through them, because we're waiting for God to do it, rather than decreeing with Him to create what God is telling you is yours. Amen. No, I'll, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. Well, good luck. Amen. You know, if, you, if the only thing, you, there's an element of faith in that, but if you're only going to believe when you see it, then you don't understand the whole basis upon which faith operates in the Bible. It's the evidence of what we don't see. It's the evidence of, it's in the spirit world, what is true before God. I hope that helps you. That really helped me. Uh, I th was thinking of a way to explain this that would really help people. Let's look at um, uh, Galatians 2.20 in Young's literal translation. Same verse in Young's literal says this. Now, you know, Young's, Young's is the translation that doesn't care how it sounds. It only cares what the grammar says. So you don't expect a smooth reading when you go to Young's, just that he's, you probably got the grammar better says this, with Christ, what? I have been crucified. With Christ, I have been crucified. And live more, no more do I, but Christ does live in me. And that which I now live in the flesh, in the faith I live of the Son of God, who did love me and gave himself for me. Now, the, the thing is, is when you start picturing the Christian life being Jesus living through you, as you walk through life, when you start picturing your life that way, it's like the, there's the, a question will arise sooner or later. Well, why aren't I seeing, frankly, Henry, if you walked around with me, there's a lot of fleshy stuff still hanging around, okay? 
So why don't I see more of Jesus coming through? Isn't that a great question? If Jesus is in there, ready to come out, make decrees, live the Christian life, if Jesus is ready to do all that, and the scripture declares that's the truth, right? We just read it from two different translations. Why am I not seeing more of Jesus coming through you? Is that an interesting question? Sure. You want to know, well, why isn't more of this functioning? You want the answer? No. Okay. That's the sermon for today, folks. Amen. Okay. So let's go to Romans chapter 6 and verse 6 and look at that question. Romans 6, 6. And let's put that up in the ESV, Gina. Romans 6, 6. Is it up there? Amen. Romans 6, 6. Yeah, we'll get down there. And we'll, we'll find it. We know that our old self, now that our old self, our old man, was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing that we would no longer serve sin. And then don't move the screen, but let's jump down to verse 13. Do not present your members to sin as instruments of unrighteousness. The King James says, do not yield yourself to unrighteousness. Do not yield your members to unrighteousness. Here's the simple truth of the word of God. Nothing happens or very little happens automatically. You must see that something is in the word, that something is true. The Holy Spirit illuminates the truth, which activates the faith of God in your life. And then you must yield to that truth. You must allow that truth to come forth in your life. The reason you're not seeing more of that than you want to see is, you say, I want to see more. Up your yielding. Up your yielding. That's all. He's there. He's ready to show forth. I just love that thought. And I didn't, I didn't really realize this, you know, until I started thinking about this more carefully. But a lot of times I look at a situation when I'm helping people and see, I have a conviction. You're going to love this. I, you're going to say, well, what do you, don't talk to me then. I have an absolute conviction. Put me in a room, take the spirit of God away from me. Let me look at what's going on in people's lives and ask me to assess what I think is happening with them. And I, my personal conviction is 100% or close to it of the time I will misassess what is going on in the person's life. Because we are, we are a spirit man and we are hooked into the spirit realm. And in order to know what's going on in a person's life, you've got to take the circumstances and kind of put them aside and say, Holy Spirit, what's really happening here? Amen. What is really going on here? Because if you look at the natural circumstances and draw conclusions, you're wrong most of the time. Every once in a great while, the natural circumstances will line up with what's going on in the spirit. But rarely is that the case. And so this verse, you're saying, well, why don't I see more of Jesus? It's the same thing. You're looking at your life and you're looking at your circumstances and saying, well, it looks to me like uh, I need debt cancellation. Let's say that we prayed about that this morning. So let's say that that's one of the needs in your life. I need debt cancellation. I know what I do. I need a better job. And you say, Lord, let me look through this. Let me look through your eyes at my circumstance because you've already assessed it. You need a better job with more money. And you start praying about death cancellation. And the Holy Spirit says to you, you know, you could be a lot wiser with your expenditures. Ouch. Come on. You could be a lot wiser with your expenditures. You spend a whole lot of money on things that you really don't need. And if you start listening to me, I'll help you be wiser with your expenditures. Come on, folks. We look at our situation. We got to get more money here. And the Lord says, actually, you know, and we got to get more money here. I need debt cancellation. Lord, how does this look to you? I need a better job. And you might need a better job, but I'm just saying your assessment is I need more money. And the Holy Spirit says to me, actually, I've given you a whole lot of money and you've eaten your seed all through the years. You've never consistently given to me and put your giving under the Lordship of Jesus and let me give through you the way I want to. You've eaten your seed over and over and over again. Yeah. Come on. 
Haven't you ever heard words like that? If you've never heard words like that, you're not listening because the Holy Spirit is not there to condemn us, but he is there to help us understand what, our, what we're doing with our lives. Does that help you? And see, the whole thing is, you, you know, so take your life and your circumstances and, you know, if you've got an issue going on in your life, picture Jesus behind your eyes looking at the same thing because he is. And say, Lord, assess this situation for me through your eyes instead of my eyes. Let me see this. I've just, you know, I've done this so many times. So I've got a, a great conviction. Just leave the Holy Ghost out of your decision-making process and just welcome to the club of nine times out of ten you're wrong. That, it's that simple, folks. You know why? Because Jesus died to actually live inside of you every problem, every challenge, every circumstance, every need that you have is already provided for. And he's, he's so great that he said, now I'm giving you all this and I know you'll never do it right anyway because I've got thousands of years of people who can't do it right you know, without me, right? And so he said, what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna raise him from the dead and I'm gonna, by the spirit of God, like he told the disciples, he's been with you, but he'll be in you, okay? I'm gonna put the Holy Spirit inside of you. I'm gonna grant you the new birth. But when I put the Holy Spirit inside of you, what I'm actually doing is I'm putting Jesus inside oh boy I'm putting Jesus inside of you he can meet the challenge he has the strength you need he has the wisdom you need and you say well why am I not seeing more because you have to believe this and then you have to decide within yourself that you're going to yield to him in your life and frankly the preaching that I heard when I was young I wanted nothing to do with this because the way God was presented to me was this, he was this old crabby guy, you know, sitting in the back of a long, hard room waiting to bark at you for every little mistake that you made. And I thought, well, why would I want to yield to that? And then I started to hear teaching where I found out that that's not who God is. Well, that was good news. God is love, and the God of love is inside of me. And so, you know, what we fear then, amen. When Jesus is ready to look at it, Jesus is ready to make these decrees. Jesus is ready to move the mountains and remove the obstacles through you. Oh, well, that's totally different. So you're saying Jesus will remove them. Yep. But I thought it was me that removed them. Yep. See, it doesn't work any other way. It's both of you. But he's ready to move through you when you choose to believe that that's true, yield to this truth, and begin to let him out. Are you seeing this? This, this you, can, you can overcomplicate things. You can study your tripart being and spirit man and all that's very helpful in certain cases. But you can get down to the point where you lose the fact that the person of Jesus by the Holy Spirit is inside of you ready to make these decree, life-altering decrees that are going to create what you need in your life. Glory to God. Mm. Well, if Jesus is going to do it through me, what's the right answer, folks? Then it's a piece of cake, right? Then I can do this. Why? Because Jesus is going to do it through me. I can do this. There's no problem. When you start thinking like that, all of this stuff comes out of this ethereal realm and comes down to a very practical application. Amen. Does that help any of you? You know, th th this is how simple it is if you'll just allow it, if you'll just allow it to be relational. Amen. And realize that he's inside of you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's give one more example and then we'll close with a point. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. We've talked about this. It says this. 1 Corinthians 6, 17 says this. But he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. You've got to free yourself from linear thinking, meaning that one thing is true and only one thing is true. There can be two things true at the same time. This is another verse where two things are true at the same time. It says, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. And it's the number one in this verse. It is not the ordinal number. It's the cardinal number one. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. You say, now, wait a minute. I thought Jesus was Jesus and I'm here. 
Yep. Well, wait a minute again. I thought, I thought we were talking about this new nature thing. I thought we were talking about my spirit man. Yep. Yep, we are. Well, then wait a minute. What's this about? I, I, so so we, the issue is he that is joined to the Lord is the Holy Spirit? Yep. Two things true at the same time that allow these things to work together in a way that it takes the pressure off of you. When you start to, this is a revelation. When you start to meditate on this, you realize how far God has stacked the deck in our favor for us to succeed. It don't get no better, as they say someplace, okay? It doesn't get any better than the fact that Jesus Christ, by the Spirit of God, is within you, ready to make the decrees, to remove the obstacles, to create the things that you need in your life. Is that good news or what? One last verse and we'll close for today. Colossians 1, 26 and 27 says this. Colossians 1, 26 and 27. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of his glory. This revelation is to reveal to you the riches of his glory. That's why he did it this way. And then it goes on to say this, the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Who's that? For most of us, that's us, right? Among the Gentiles, which is what? Christ in you, the hope of glory. It doesn't get any better than this, folks. You need, to, you need healing, the healer's inside of you. You need assessment, you need to know how to believe the author and finisher of the faith is inside of you. Ready to make the decrees that will remove the mountains and will create the result that you're looking for. God bless his word in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your grace, and we thank you for this new revelation, Father, or the deepening of it in some of us, Father, that Jesus is ready to do this through us. It is our decree, and it is his decree through us. And Father, we simply acknowledge that, and we pray and ask for a new level of yieldedness that allows this to come forth in our lives. In Jesus' name.